you want to be able to take your AI images and animate them even better so in some cases than Deforum, then I have the solution script slash extension for you. What's up, world? It's Trevor here, back in the video. Today we're checking out all things stable diffusion, and specifically we're looking at the extension slash scripts category. Now this is more so of a script, but it is also an extension in itself. Extensions are usually just a bunch of scripts together. This is just one script, so it's kind of like both. Anyways, we're gonna get on to the installs and everything with it because it is quite complex, and there are a few different methods of what I figured out over the past few days and how to get this work. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna leave this link down below. This is gonna have everything on the script slash extension, and essentially it's gonna give you instructions. So in case you wanna just go off the text, you can do that, or I can showcase how to use it in this video. And there is a few errors that I ran into, so I kinda wanna show you how to get past those. So first up, we wanna get FFmpeg on our PC, and we wanna get this all set and ready to go. So I'll have this link down below in the description, and this is just going to be the download location for FFmpeg and you're going to come down here into whatever operating system you have either Apple Windows or Linux so we have Windows so we're going to come to this one and we're going to go to Windows builds dev from here now there are two different links that you can go to so there are a couple different ones that you can go in here but I do suggest this one this is the one that I have now there are a bunch of different things here you know what to make sense of what I would go ahead and just get this FFM get full. This is just the full of everything. It's going to have everything for you. That way you don't have to worry about downloading all these libraries and such. There's a lot of stuff there. If you're really like, you know, nerdy into this stuff and really want to get into it, you can just go with some of the release builds and the essentials and all that stuff. But for now, go ahead and click this one, get full, and it should download the FFM pack. Now I already have it right here. So next up, we're going to take this WinRAR file. Now hopefully you have WinRAR. If you don't, I'll also have a download link for that below but most people do nowadays if you do have winwar this will open up like this and we're going to go ahead and take this to typically you want to go to like your local drive so like your c drive the reason being is because you want it to be able to access it's, it's just a, it's first of all it's an easy place to have and i'm pretty sure that the windows files actually can access in here even so without adding a variable that we're going to add so it is it's nice just to have there so anyways what you're going to want to do is create a new folder now you're not going to have this one here i made mine path so that's what i did i made a new folder and just labeled it path so you'll jump in to here in the path folder and then what we're going to want to do is come into here into the main folder none of the other stuff matters like presets this license stuff or any of this other stuff you're just going to come into bin and drag these three files into here now once you have it in there you're going to go ahead and Control c or right click copy you want to copy this file path and in the bottom left here in the search icon you're going to type in path and hit enter and then once you're here you're going to come into system recovery, or not system recovery, I'm sorry, right below that, you're going to come into environment variables. Click into this, and then we're going to head into the path section here under environment variables. We're going to click on this, and we're going to go ahead and hit edit, and then we're going to hit new. And you'll see a bunch here that I've already added from some other stuff, but you're essentially going to want to add this. So you're going to hit con control V once you hit new, and as you see, I already have it here, so I don't need to re-add it, so that's fine. And then once it's added in there, once you see, you know, whatever you have, minus C path, hit OK, hit OK, and OK. So now we're done with that step, and we're essentially, we have FFmpeg installed. Now, I do also want to mention there is a way to check if you have FFmpeg installed, and that way would be by coming into CMD and just typing in FFmpeg. And all this should come up here, and if it does, then you have it installed. Now, heading back into the install script section here, we have uh, obviously get stable diffusion working. Hopefully you have stable diffusion at this point. If you don't, there's plenty of tutorials online. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but we do have this script here. Now I did notice, and I'll see if this happens again, but when I right clicked and save linked file and I tried to save it right here, Chrome was blocking it. And there was no way, usually there's like a little option that says keep, there was no option there. It just said to discard. So the way to bypass that, again, this is completely safe. People have checked it. You can run it through a virus scanner if you want. You click on this little section here, then it's, it should open up kind of like this file box page. Once you're here, then you can hit right click, save as, and you hit save. And um, we'll just go ahead and replace it since I already have it. And you'll see there, it went ahead and downloaded it. So very simple, Chrome won't block it that way if you do it that way, just by clicking into the section there. Now the next step is really simple. Obviously we're gonna head into our stable diffusion folder and we're gonna head into scripts. And we're going to go on ahead and drag that little script down here. I named it loopbackwave.pi, or I renamed it that. But you don't have to, but we'll come into our downloads folder here really, really quickly. And you can see it's right there. We'll go ahead and 
drag it in here and then that's all you need to do again i renamed it to loopback wave this should pop up as loopback wave in the scripts folder so you won't really need to rename it i don't think but i did just so but heading into stable diffusion we will go into the image to image tab and once we're in the image to image tab because the way this works is image to image and we could come into here and do our scripts and it should say loopback wave not loopback but loopback wave this is the script that we want and so we'll go ahead and click that on and now we have our full section here and everything that you want that needs to be said or explained is all here like your frames frames for wave wave offsets a lot of stuff here i do understand and can explain it to you but some of the things here i'm still new to so i don't feel as applicable in that scenario to explain everything it's already all here everything that you need to know about the weights and things of that nature and all the little different even prompting examples and things of that so everything's here and again i'll have this download i'll have this link down in the description down below okay so now that we have everything set up here i went ahead and did something that was only 50 frames so i changed this to 50 and kind of kept the loopback wave at 20 and i also came into here and just set the prompt to what I wanted it to, which was might only be in my extras tab, which was an image here that I was one of my mo most favorite images I ever made. In fact, I made a video on it a while back, and just looks cool. I think it has like this nice little like Pixar look to it, and I kind of wanted it to um, move down into like a, a gothic sort of look. Now I had some erroring here, and this seems to be with the newest version of Stable Diffusion update. So a lot of people are getting this issue here, and essentially it's just not aligning things in the upscale exactly the way i want it but again this has nothing to do with the actual thing itself this is just when we go to upscale it so i'll show you how to kind of fix that and what i'm going to do to remedy this and kind of get it working right but anyways back in image image to image here i basically took that prompt which was if i come into my png info here and i'll kind of showcase how long the prompt was as you can see here the prompt was extremely long so i, I basically just put this in there now you're going to want to put the like the prompting in here as well at the top because you want it to be able to like this is like kind of like your base this is what you want the image to be based now if you saw those images at the beginning in fact we'll go through a few now a few of those videos and so for even like this anime one here as you can see it kind of has the same sort of facial things here and the same sort of body structure throughout the entire segment and the way to sort of keep that the same is by having this up here in your text field i noticed that first when i wasn't keeping that the prompt would go all crazy and you also want to put your image in here as well so i'm going to go ahead and do that now so this was the image that i started with and i just slapped it in here along with the exact prompt that i used in this one now you can go ahead and use any image you want here you can generate one from an you know and it, it like your own ai image prompt and then throw it an image to image and then you can make the video from that so that was just kind of what i did there now a bunch of different settings down here i did change this down to eight i heard that this one is kind of a little bit more crazy with that with the sort of cfg scale and then i also moved this one down to point three which was a recommendation by a few of the people that use the script as, as well as the script maker i believe also has this as a setting but 0.3 to 0.5 is a good range here and then this one up to 0.7 now again the rest of the settings you can toy with the wave setting the amount of frames you want to use and they recommend to leave the web um as the video encoding for now frames per second there's a bunch of stuff that you can mess with so once this once this is done generating it'll generate a ton of images here depending on how many frames you have and it should look it should go into your image to image folders here and then into the loopback wave section now there's a bunch of different videos here because i've been toying around with this a ton but essentially this is what we got and this is the little segment here and as you see, mine doesn't have as much consistency as the other videos, and it's also not being upscaled yet, or at least not fixed to be upscaled. But it looks, I think, decent enough overall, and it gets the point across. The point of the video is to get this working. However, now I'm going to go over to the upscale section of the video, which is getting these images to be upscaled. As you see, they were kind of a little bit lackluster as far as the upscaling goes. So essentially what I did is I came into here. This is, this is all of your frames each one we're going to obviously upscale these to a much higher resolution image so what we can do is we can head over to our extras tab and we can batch from our directory now obviously you'll need to grab the directory so what i did here first Control c we'll paste it in here 
So we have where our images are being stored. And then I made a folder called, I, I didn't put the S, but upcaled or our upscale folder. And then here is our output folder. And that's where we want it to output. Now, unfortunately, like I said, there's a new bug here where it's like generating a random frame here and here. What you can do, because upscaled has two images, right? We're getting two images here. First off, we can come in here and we can hit JPEG. And we can remove all of the JPEG files. I like PNG anyways. I think PNG is a higher graphic fidelity normally overall. So now we no longer have those random JPEGs, right? And here, what I can tell from this is that something got messed up after this point and these images were supposed to be here. So I'm going to scooch these back some and pretty much relabel these each segment here. And so that way I can kind of have them at a, at a proper number. And actually, just for the purposes of this video, so I don't have to go relabel all of these back in order, I'm just going to delete out these frames for now. And just, again, just for an example, where hopefully this doesn't happen to you, for one. And for two, you're just going to have to go through and renumber these into the kind of correct segment. So I'm just going to delete these extra frames out for now, just for an example. But now we're going to get on to the point where we're taking upscaled images, because these are upscaled and look a lot better, and we're going to then use it in a video format, but we're also going to add some frame interpolation. Now I'm gonna have this link down below. This is the Flow Frames Interpolator. There is also something called Film, and I got this installed, and I've had so many errors and issues with this. It took like three hours last night to get this all installed. This was that GPU environment you saw in my variables list that I added. And after getting all of this installed and learning how to make a, basically an anaconda environment with Python and all that stuff I couldn't get it working so if you want to try this is what some people use and some people use flow frames the difference is I'm pretty sure negligible and probably doesn't matter well here we are in flow frames so you can go ahead and download now the issue with flow frames at the at the current moment without having to pay for it is that with certain things it won't work so with image segments it doesn't want to do it unless you pay for it so essentially we'll come into our flow frames folder here that i have installed and the problem is that when we come into here when we want to do images right so that folder that i used and once we're back in our folder with our upscaled images we want to just use the images right so this is it says frames folder and i have made a video folder inside that upscale folder so that was my going to be my output directory. Now the problem here is I cannot type in the output FDS. This is only with the newer flow frames that you're able to do this. So you cannot use these upscaled images, which is the unfortunate part. So I have two solutions down below to kind of remedy this for now. Either you can get the guy's Patreon and buy the flow frames, or if you can figure out film, then use film. Or if not, you can use these editors online, image sequence to video, and there's another one here, image sequence to video. I'm gonna go ahead and use my normal video editing program because I know how to do it in there and it works pretty well. But if not, yeah, you can use Vegas or something else. Now I have my video fully rendered out in an image sequence using my normal video editor. Again, if you wanna use the, either one of the online tools that I provided, but it should put together the sequence just fine. There is plenty of other ways to do it. Adobe After Effects and tons of, tons of ways like that. Or you can just use the original image and video that we had produced with the loopback, which was put into here. And it's just kind of like a WebM. You can also use that to frame interpolate and it should just look as fine. Just not upscaled. Now that we have the interpolation open, we're going to use flow frames. Or again, if you have your own, you want to set the input folder to what the input was for the video. And then for my output folder, I'm going to have it go into that little upscaled folder and then into video. Now, as you can see, we have it at 10 FPS right now, which is what it should be. At least that's what we put in for the stable diffusion frames was that we did it at 10. So now we're going to do it by times two. You can do it by times three, four, five. I would do it by times two and times three is usually pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything here else the same unless you have a different graphics card go ahead and change what you need to and we're gonna go ahead and click interpolate now this is pretty quick it's a run in fact i think it only takes a few minutes to do all this stuff so once it's done in fact i, I don't even need to wait we'll just wait for it to pop on i thought maybe it'd take like a couple minutes but it should be pretty quick with the frame rate here and there it goes looks like it's done 
already. And as you can kind of see, we have a much more seamless transition through different things here. And I don't know why it gets so jumped up over there. I think it's because I took, I had to remove a few frames out of this in order to get it work with that little upscaled thing. And I probably should have just renamed all the files of what you'd probably have to do if you're running into that upscale error. But as you see, it's a much more seamless transition and it actually kind of looks pretty good. Um, and so that should about cover for today's video. If you, you guys need any other or have any other questions, please let me know down below. I tried to cover everything that I could think of in this video, especially all the errors and stuff that I ran into with the film stuff i really really tried to get this working and i just couldn't but maybe i'll have another video on how to get this working when i do eventually and if you guys can like and subscribe i'd appreciate that as well if you enjoyed the video and until the next one deuces